Yesterday, I received the news that one of my older brothers has passed away after fighting a long battle with pancreatic cancer. And I've had some reflections on how do I approach this uncharted territory of losing a sibling. So I have nine siblings. I'm one of 10 children, rather one of the younger ones. I'm number eight on the bottom of the line. So I have seven older siblings. This was the first one to pass away. He is number three. He was a rabbi who served a community in Madrid, Spain for over 45 years. And he passed away where he served the community for all these years. He has lived his life and was able to squeeze every bit out of life possible until his soul was recalled in heaven. And I have had some opportunity in the last 24 hours to process what happens when you lose a sibling. What does it do to you? And where do you go from here? And I want to share this with you. If you have had this experience of losing a sibling, is perhaps you too can understand and appreciate what I am going through and how I am processing it. But I want to show us you some thoughts through the prism of Torah, of the Bible. The Torah has taught us the concept of life and death is not the way we understand it at all. It's not how we appreciate life or understand death. Both concepts, life and death, are out of our reach, out of our realm, because only God Almighty gives life and gives it to us for as long as we need it. And then, when time is up, is where death occurs. And it's very interesting, in the Kabbalah, in the mysticism of the Bible, when it talks about death, the terminology that's used is Hilula, which means an elevation. Or another word is Histalkut, which means ascending, going up. There's no words about death as we think of it to be as an end. It's not an end. Rather, when a person passes away, when a person dies, it's moving from one world to another world, but the person continues on living. My brother was born 72 years ago. He lived 72 full years. His soul entered in its body at birth. And at age 72, yesterday, his body can no longer be the vehicle, the vessel to embody his soul anymore. So the soul ascends up to heaven, but the soul does not die. My brother did not die yesterday. He passed on. He is not going to ever die because I will not let him die. Because I will continuously think about him. I will continuously remember him. And I know that because he lived such a beautiful life of him and his wife giving so much to the community, his whole life was about serving others. 
in a very difficult conditions, difficult times he has gone through trying to establish the community in Madrid, Spain. But he was on this mission with opening up his house with hospitality, bringing up 14 children and being a rabbi to a community. All of his actions over all these decades don't go away because his body expired. His physical body has finished its journey on this world. His physical body that was given to him 72 years ago has reached its conclusion of journey of services. But the soul has not. The soul will continuously ascend and be present. And that is how Judaism understands death. That it's not the end, but it's rather a new beginning. Yes, I am going to miss seeing my brother. I'm going to miss having an opportunity to talk to him to text him, to email him, to respond to his WhatsApps, I'm going to miss it. But it doesn't mean that he died. It means that he is now moving on to another dimension. He's now moving on to a location where he will no longer be limited by a physical body. He will no longer be suffering and fighting ailments and fighting between two worlds and trying to stay alive, he no longer is going to have those challenges because he has completed his mission. And I'm so happy for him that he has reached his completion. 72 years old is rather young in our days, but he lived 72 full years, accomplished years. And now as the soul leaves the body, it ascends to heaven. And when my brother arrives at the gates of heaven, he will have what to show for. He would have what to report, how he spent his life. The decades that he spent in teaching, in inspiring, in offering hospitality and kindness, unconditionally he will have a smile on his face and God at the gates of heaven would welcome his soul back because it has accomplished what it was set on this world to do but what does that do for me as a sibling what is my take from this it's painful to deal with the loss of a sibling this is our first sibling to have, to have passed away, to have passed on. And it's painful to think about it in that sense. But when you know your sibling and you know what they have accomplished and they are now passing on the baton to me so that I should appreciate being alive, so I should appreciate and recognize that I too have a mission that at some point my mission is going to come to an end. At some point when that end happens, I too am going to ascend into heaven and I too are going to be giving an accounting of how I spent my life. I pray every day that I live a long life so I could continue on doing good and accomplishing. But when we lose a sibling and we are here, we, he is survived by us, it gives us a moment to pause and to be grateful to still be alive and to bring into reality that no one lives forever on this world, but our life continues on in the next world. But be it as it may be, every morning we wake up, it's a gift, it's a miracle, and we should not take it for granted. 
To sum it up into simple words, let's not take life for granted. Every morning, thank God for giving your soul back so that you can continue on your mission, what you were sent for in this world. I look back on my life. I've spent 40 plus years being a rabbi, being a teacher, and trying to inspire anyone I have met. That has been my calling, and that has been my journey of life, of trying to do as much good as possible. And I've made a lot of mistakes along the way, and I realize how human I really am. I too have temptations. I too have an evil inclination. I too can make great errors. But that doesn't mean that you become a bad person. It doesn't mean that you are what you do. But rather, it's how you recover. You can't change what happened. But you can change how you react. And I look back at my life story, as now my brother looks back at his 72 years. You realize that we are all humans. We are all created equally in the image of God. And we are all given the same energy and power, a godly soul, that we can all make choices, whether it's right choices or wrong choices. And when we go wrong, we have a remedy, and that is called repentance, forgiveness. When we repent, we are forgiven. God Almighty in heaven will forgive us. And we can begin life anew. Every moment that we look up to God and ask God for forgiveness, He will forgive you. And life starts fresh, just like a newborn child. That whatever baggage you had until now is unloaded because you repented sincerely and you have made resolve to live a more better life life and you'll be accountable for all of your actions more accurately and more meaningfully this is what life's journey is all about so as i reflect about losing my sibling it empowers me it inspires me it really reminds me of the clock that ticks forward how seconds turns into minutes, minutes turns into hours, hours turns into days, days into weeks, weeks into months, months into years, years into decades. And then one day God says, your mission is over. Now it's time to return your soul back to where it came from. Once that happens, we can no longer do any good in this world. We can no longer accomplish anything because we no longer have our vehicle, our bodies that God gave us. So as long as we are alive, body and soul together, embrace it. Do not take it for granted. Do not take for granted your other siblings. Now I have eight other siblings that I want to connect with even greater because now I realize how the end does happen. Until it happens, you don't realize it. But once it happens, it makes you realize how valuable time is and how important it is to really be close to your family members, be close to your siblings. For whatever reason, God put you all together as a family so that you can be there for each other be there to each other embrace each other stay close stay in touch because very quickly the seconds turns into minutes and who knows when the clock stops for the next sibling embrace your family reconcile stay close it is so important to stay close with your family members. They're not just your family members. They are souls that God put together in one family. 
when our parents gave birth to us, our whole family was handpicked by God to be together so that we should not only get along with each other, but be there for each other, love each other, and support each other and embrace each other no matter how we are. May my brother's soul continue to ascend in heaven. I am so proud of him, and I hope he'll be proud of me as he looks down from heaven. Brothers and sisters in life are also brothers and sisters in the afterlife. Because life will live on. And we pray and we hope that very soon we will see the redemption of the world with the coming of the Messiah as promised. And the dead will become resurrected. All those who have passed away in the past will be resurrected. And we will be reunited yet once again. Let's pray and I hope that it happens speedily in our days. Amen. God bless you. God loves you.